Look who's back by popular demand. All the latest Chiron action has got people asking, what is the state of the Genetron and the Zayed? Well, we've got a hot replay from one of the top, top, if not the top Zayed players out there today. I want to call him the Cyril of Zayed, but I don't even know if you can make comparisons like that. Let me just say he's a guy who really knows how to play the Zayed and leave it at that. His opponent is a barcode which is a way of anonymizing yourself. I'm gonna be calling him Genitron today. Or puts down that starting feeding pool. That gives you eight supply like a depot, but remember it also has that healing property. Almost like a really weak sauce shield battery. Genitron puts down his processing node to get his eight supply, and now he's making a manufacturer. Zayad Den for core, this is the equivalent of spawning pool in racks pretty much here. So everyone is asking, when can we see the Chiron up against the Genitron and the Zayed? That functionality doesn't exist just yet, but it is coming. Oh, you'll notice how Barcode puts his processing node right next to the processing core. There's a synergy there. The node enhances the core's rate of energy regeneration. And that energy gets used for an ability called Mining Priority. That's when the workers suddenly get chrono boosted and they go crazy. You know what we need to do here? We need the night vision goggles. Haven't done those in ages. Let's drop that puppy. But this map is so dark and I really want to show how sharp these units are. Yes, we've gone back to the map Nightshade. Not Lightshade, but Nightshade. I can see so much better now. We're just in time because the first Zydling is about to pop. You'll notice the individual tech structures produce their own larva. The hatch or the scavenger nest does not do that. Oh, that ACR worker stuck around too long. Unless he's trying the old bait and lure. Genitron's making a spitfire back home. And he might relish the chance to pick off a lone zydling. There's that spitfire. That three-wheeler is kind of like a marine on wheels. But it's got a couple of really interesting upgrades. One is just a speed upgrade. But the other one's called tracking munitions. Ah, the zydling went home. He didn't fall for it and we get no action. Anyways, tracking munitions puts a tracer on your opponent. And then the Spitfire gets a range upgrade against any opponent it's got a tracker on. It opens up some neat micro possibilities. You drop a spidey tracer on someone and then you can hit them from out of range. That's one of the things I keep learning about the Genitrons. You really got to do the upgrades to see their potential. Genitron's expanding as well. He's got his first uploader on his manufacturer. Mutagen chamber is done for core. That's like your Evo chamber. You see how that uploader's now got a fishing line on that manufacturer? It's almost like putting a tech lab on it. It lets you unlock more powerful units. The Zydlings are guarding that ramp, but there's also a bile pit going down. It's such a great little turret, air and land. It's like a photon cannon. Two Spitfires make an incursion onto the Zyad side of the map here. They might be looking for a run by, but I don't think the Sim City's gonna make that possible. They see that bile pit and they back right off. That was a Zydling dash. It's not just a speed buff. The Zydling actually attack faster after they dash. Interestingly, Blizzard actually tried that exact formula with the Adepts. There was a brief period for a few weeks where the Adepts did more damage with their Glaives after a Shade. But Blizzard cancelled it because it took away the drama as to whether the Shade was going to complete and be real or if it was just a fake out. Because if there is an attack bonus, the Shade was always going to be real. Maybe the idea was inspired by the Zydling. Who knows? And speaking of things that have a short burst of speed, Genitron's just added a couple of blazes. These little mini walking mechs might remind you a bit of Hellbats, but they might be even better at run -bys. They get a quick burst of speed, but they also cloak when they do it. Oh, Raptor's being added. This is getting serious, we better do our intros. Robin's rules state, before you can have a vote at a meeting, you must have 50 plus 1% of the people present. You must have Quarrar! <laughs> Actually, the bylaws will specify what percentage you need, but the point is that Quora sounds a bit like Quora. In the bottom right, our Genitron player is exactly 12 lines in 11 spaces. He is Barco! Oh yeah, we are kicking it old school. 
Oh, incoming Raptors, and I don't mean the basketball team. You're gonna do a double take when I tell you these flying units only cost 75 minerals, 75 gases. Well, actually 150, but it spawns too, like Zerglings. And the defense is late. Genetron needs to get out that anti-air. The Spitfires and Blazes aren't feeling too useful just about now. But the Blitzer pops out of the manufacturer and puts a stop to it. That tank-treaded vehicle shoots both air and ground, and it even has decent speed all at a decent cost. It really is the Genetron all-purpose unit. You'll see it as the backbone of a lot of Genetron armies. The Raptors return home and they immediately get healed by the Mendlings that have been added into the composition. Think of them as really big, grotesque-looking medics. Oh, the Blazes are looking to counter. This is what they're built for, that harass. But there's a lot of defense at that natural, including detection. Oh, the Raptors spot their approach. Genetron splits his Blazes, and there's the invisibility run. Speed cloaking. It's the hot new trend, but Quora has the worker pull. It was just a single scavenger kill. Not an ideal return on investment for Genetron. The good news for Genetron is even though he lost round one of the harass, he's still up eight workers. And if he capitalizes on his mining priority ability, he can really get an income lead. And now he switched to double uploaders on one of his manufacturers. He's still just making blitzers though. We'll have to see what he's got in mind. Oh, I see. He's using the uploader to research reinforced plating. That's going to give every one of his blitzers an extra plus 25 health. They've got 140 to begin with, so it's a big difference. It's kind of proportionally similar to combat shields. That takes your Marines' hit points from 45 to 55, but you really feel it. Oh, quar has got a second avian nest. He's really committing to air. That excites me a little bit, because we haven't seen a lot of Zayad air on this channel. Such as this killer swarm of raptors. Individually, they only do 8 damage, but that's a lot. There's an interdictor there to defend, but it just gets taken right down. The Blitzers roll into the mineral line at the natural. Are they going to be able to chase those raptors off? Yes, they do. And Barcode knows he's going to have to make a commitment to air defense. The raptors only got 4 ACRs, so it wasn't as bad as it looked. But I was impressed that they brought down a 300 hit point turret. I am told that turrets are a much bigger part of Genetron than they are for any of the other races. One thing that's fun about the Genetron turrets though is you can actually sink them into the ground and then pop them up on your opponent to attack. Oh, Quar has got Menlings out. They are healing those injured raptors. Plus 30 hit points with every splash. But it's more like the second part of the transfuse. It heals over time. Well, this Spitfire scout has a death wish. Mission control. I confirm there's a high level of DPS in the Zayad Death Ball. Oh, and it looks like Quar has added assailants to his army. Those are those portly flying bugs. Sorry, I'm trying hard not to fat shame them. They are bombers, ground attack only. And what's really cool is they do four shots at once. Think of the Banshees two shot, but double it. That means if your target has an armor of one, you're really reducing the damage by four. But if you have a numeric attack rate of plus one, you're really increasing the attack by four. So by making it four small attacks instead of one big one, they've really changed the character of the unit. It looks to me like Quar is looking to take advantage of the fact that his opponent doesn't have any air units right now. And it doesn't look like that's about to change. Though he swapped his uploader technique around a bit. And he's adding fabricators. That's going to build bigger, more deadly machines. Genetron ahead on workers, Zayat ahead on army. And we would typically expect that because the Genetron's going to be investing in Static D and that's not going to show up in the army size. And the processing core has that mining priority ability. It's a bit like dropping a mule. Except that if you let your energy build up, you can't suddenly drop four of them like you can with Terran. Quora is looking to take a fourth base and he's got some raptors hanging around on the left side looking to strike. Oh, hello. Quora just added the exterminators. It's kind of an irony that a bug race would have a unit called the Exterminator. Oh, the raptors are going home. Anyways, Exterminator always makes me think of the Daleks from Doctor Who. Exterminate! Exterminate! I love how in the remake they somehow found a way to actually make them scary. Right, so the Exterminators are heading out, which is kind of weird because they only attack air. Though they do have a special ability to attack the ground. Oh, that poor processing drone just circled right over a bile pit. He drops a debuff on some drones there. What's super cool about the processing... Whoa! That is super cool. 
The exterminators are using their ability incendiary infusion on the drones. It's a bit like parasitic bomb and hurts everything around it. It's not quite as deadly, but it looks cooler with these flashy explosions. Oh, and Quarter picks up the processing drone as well. That's so important to the Genitron because that's one of their main sources of detection. I'm impressed how much use Quarter has gotten out of those exterminators already. I thought it was just insurance for an air transition or a mismake. That is an impressive looking army of bugs. I even see a Xyathoan in there. It looks vaguely like a bat or a queen from StarCraft 1. It's an aerial spellcaster. Oh, but look at the adjustment for the Genitron. It looks like he's gone like 40% torrent. The torrent is a powerful mobile anti-air unit. And they're also good for pirating software. Or so I'm told. But my point is as scary as the Zyat is looking, the Genitron can put a ton of DPS into the air. Really good range, especially after you get that enhanced targeting upgrade gives you that extra plus three range on the torrent. And that's a good thing, because Quora's gone for triple aviation nets and double evolution pits. That's where the ranged upgrades come from. Which killer death ball is gonna push out first? Both our players have been pretty passive, content to expand and try to max out. Oh, Raptor Scout takes a look around, and that poor bug died about 17 times over. He died so hard, the rest of Quora's armies pull him back. Our players are pretty identical here. Very close on army, very close on workers. The difference maker is that the Genitron has a lot more tech, more upgrades, and more static defense. The other thing I would say is that Quora has a lot more of a diverse composition. We'll see what happens, but right now it looks like both players are just gonna split the map here. More torrents joining the Genitron army. I like that choice. Yes, there are ground forces, but the real threat is in the air. At this rate, I'm expecting a really big clash. And neither side seems to want to do it where their opponent can bring their turrets to bear. Now, since Barcode's gone and made so many torrents, I should go and say something about them. They're similar to the Thor in that they've got two different attack modes. You pick one or the other and you change it. One has a steady fire rate for that higher DPS, and the other has that slower but big punch for that shock value attack. Both versus air. But regardless of what mode it's in, the torrent can engage in questionable applications of file sharing at any time. Oh, we've got moles. This is still one of my favorite Genitron units. They're just so cute. But they also have that powerful ranged attack, filling the role of the siege tank almost. Oh, the Genitron are going to be the first to attempt to take a fifth base. Never mind, Quora is right behind them. This has been a very even game. Quora is pretty much maxed out now and he started building a bank. And he capped out his supply with a pair of Leviathans. Those gigantic nightmarish dudes are the Zayed capital ships. They're called Krakens. And if you were impressed by the assailants four attacks at once, then the Kraken six will be even more impressive. And they also have an ability which is kind of like the biological equivalent of a nuke. Just like a nuke, they have to pay for it every time they try to use it. It's called Volatile Discharge. Which sounds kind of like something that happens every time I try to get on a boat. Oh, hold that phone, we're pushing out here. Is this a two ships passing in the night scenario? Oh, is Barcode gonna get caught breaking rocks? Quora has revealed himself, or at least part of his army. The Genitron are looking to shorten their attack path. They might not appreciate what's lurking on their doorstep, because they look way out of position. Okay, here's the pullback. You cannot have two armies this big, this close for long. Oh, Quora's pulling out. Come on! There's such a tease. Come on, let's do this. Mass battle. Double max armies. Let's do this. Oh, Genitron's going for the rocks. That is not good for him. He doesn't want to get caught with his pants down. Oh, here we go. Genitron gets off the first volley. Quora firing off the spells, but Genitron just has so much. The sky just lights up with blue tracers. Quora tries to reposition his units in the back to get a better concave, but he has melted. Even one of the Krakens is dead, and the other one's down to two hit points. That thing started with 550 hit points, and it's down to two. Imagine doing 548 points of damage only to miss the final two. And now the Mendlings are going to work, casting that 30 hit point heal over and over and over. It takes a lot of healing to bring a Kraken back from two hit points. That battle kind of reminded me of the Goliath from Brood War. You think you have air superiority, and then... No, no you don't. That ground unit shooting up has got your number. The torrent really looked like the dominant unit there. Both our players are looking to hastily remax. They've got the banks to do it. 
It's Quora who's gonna get back to full first. He maxes out by adding 18 Scorpalists and 8 Kaznalists. He's keeping his opponent guessing as to his composition. By adding in Scorpalists, he's put in Armored Ground Units. Not exactly what you want your torrents going up against. Oh, look who's processing drone just learned how to cloak. Now he's like an observer that can cast spells. He cloaks, he detects, he debuffs. And he can get a crap ton of energy from the processing core. Everybody's using the great pause here to expand and consolidate. Feeding pools and bile pits going down around those new expansions. Oh, our Genitron player's mixing it up as well. Barcode's investing in an assembly array. That's gonna let him unlock air units. More and more different kinds as he links up those uploaders. Well, I'm glad I talked up that processing drone so he could fly into a detector and die. Though if he saw the transition to Scorpolis, that may have given him some valuable information. When the Scorpolis hits a unit, it injects a venom with its attack, and that slows his opponent down. Quar is going to fill up just the tiny bit of space he has left in his army by adding three more Zidlings. Those disgusting grub-like worms on the ground there are the Kaznalisks. They're a support unit that takes a lot of practice. Oh, Genitron just put a triple uploader on that assembly array. There's only one reason to do that, and that's to make badgers. He's got himself the analysis terminal, which is kind of like building a fusion core. And now he can build the dreaded badger. I know, I know, officially the Genitron's not supposed to have a capital ship, but the Badger's pretty close. I'm thrilled we're gonna get a look at it. Oh, but we're gonna have another clash. Quar is gonna get a redo. Protective clouds go down in between the two armies. Move over, microbial shroud. Those partially protect from both ground and air. But the Genitron has got his moles in range. And I don't know if you saw it because it was so quick, but Barcode's researched subterranean sensors for his moles. They're actually acting like short-range sensor towers right now. Quar is trying to reposition, but the Genitron sees exactly where he's going. Quar tries to close with those Scorpolis. It's a mole barrage! Which Quar answers with stagnating vials. Those green blobs stunned all the units in the front ranks. But the moles are adding too much DPS and the Badger has linked up as well. Oh, and it's another ungodly tech switch for Quar. He instantly remaxes by trying 25 eroders. I know the Genitron's supposed to be like the Borg, but it's really Quar who's doing all the adapting here. The Eroders are even tankier than the Scorpolisk. They're completely typeless, so no unit gets any kind of bonus damage against them. Here they come, those slow-walking eyeball things. And whatever the Eroder hits, that target's damage output drops. I call them DPS Eaters. Is that the solution to the Genitron ground army? A question that will not be easily answered because Barcode is adding the Virtus. Let's call that the super tank. Heavy damage with a small degree of splash. If you're reeling from all these new units, you're not alone. Usually players pick five or six and work with that. But these players are like cycling through everything. One thing that worries me about Korra's composition though is I think the Badger will be very effective against those Eroders. Barcode's only got one Badger, so it shouldn't be too bad though. Oh, and a boar actually. There's the Virtus tanks being added in. It looks like some of the Blitzers took their vitamins. He doesn't have too many of those left though. Notice the black moles at the top of his army. It's really hard to see them on Nightshade, even with the night vision goggles. Quarter is getting aggressive again. The Genitron will be able to get their turrets in play here. Oh, but the Eroders just don't care. The moles are firing. Quora's Kaznalisks are launching stagnating vials. They stun the front ranks and the Eroders charge in. They've got a decent concave forming. The Zidlings take down the boar, but there's not enough anti-air left to deal with the Badger. But the processing core is in lockdown. Core is gonna get it. The Genitron expansion falls. There's titanic losses on both sides here, but it's the Zayad that's really macroing their army back up. Quar just dumped a ton of resources into making six more Krakens. The Badger is just ripping away here. But those Eroders are still backed by Menlees. One of which actually did something called a Sacrificial Mutation. That's the first time I've seen that done in a real game. The Menling kills itself and becomes this healing beacon for the rest of the army. It kept those Eroders alive long enough to do so much damage. He didn't just clean up the Moles, he cleaned up the Virtus as well. But the Genitron has the tech switch into the Hornets. Those Eroders just can't shoot up, but in a way they're kind of like mini Ultras that shoot, they just don't care. 
If I'm inevitably gonna die, let's see how deep I can get before I do. The Hornets and the Badger take care of business, but the Genitron is way down on supply now. And look who's coming to reinforce. I'm pretty sure the rulebook says you can't have six of those at once. Is it just me or should there be a little space pirate riding those Krakens? A drunken space pirate with like a broken bottle of space booze. This might be why nobody consults me on anything. So Quora's got triple avian nests and double mutagen chambers for those aerial upgrades. So yeah, he may have broken the Genitron front lines with ground, but it's his air that's looking oh so scary. Another Zayat expansion, Quora's definitely got the income lead, but it doesn't matter too, too much right now since both players have gigantic banks. But Barcode really needs to get to spending it before those Leviathans show up at his front door. Right now, he's just kind of calmly expanding as though his army wasn't half the size of his opponents. Oh, I get it. He was building new assembly arrays. And then he needed to get the uploaders. Barcode means to meet the mass Leviathan with mass Badger. I do believe we're being treated to what we could call late, late game Zayad versus Genitron. I don't know if that's really true or not because we don't actually have a defined meta. But if I say it with enough confidence, maybe everybody will believe it to be true. This is exactly the kinds of compositions you will see at the 20 minute mark. So the Badger attacks ground and air, and it's really good at both. But what it doesn't have is any kind of Yamato cannon or special ability you can micro. But that can really free you up to deal with other units. The Kraken, on the other hand, have that biological nuking ability. Quar did research it. It's an expensive upgrade. 200 minerals, 200 gas. Oh, a huge turret line of repulsors going up there. That's anti-ground, so it won't help him against the Leviathans. Quar is going to try to skirt around. He's looking at a base at the bottom left. There's three repulsors there, but are they repulsive enough? Barcode swings southwest to defend. The Raptors make short works of the turrets. But the Badgers are bringing the rapid fire lasers. The Krakens drop the volatile discharges, but the Genitron gun them down from a safe distance. Each one of those splashes can do 200 damage. That's a lot less than a three hit point nuke, but it's enough to be game changing. The Badgers get zoned out and Quora capitalizes. He picks up a bunch of workers and turrets before the Badgers chase him off. Oh, the Kaznalists are cloaking the Kraken. I thought that didn't work on massive units. Or maybe the Krakens don't count as massive? Sorry guys, I'm supposed to know this stuff by now. But these players keep coming up with new stuff I haven't seen before. The Badgers think there's just one crack in there. He doesn't perceive the threat, he's got no detection. His turrets are gone, he needs a processing drone. So the cloak is a spell called Covering Spray. It's temporary, and it costs Kaznalisk energy. There's still no detection. How deep are those Leviathans gonna get? There's an interdictor there though. That's gonna be the detector that Barcode needs. Volatile discharges go down. The repulsors are trying to kill them off. The Leviathans go after the repulsors. The Badgers are on top of the discharges! He just lost 60 supply in a second. Yeah, the comment that Barco just typed in kind of sums up his feelings on that one. I'm impressed that he didn't go for a letter combo involving G's. That is incredibly disheartening and demoralizing. That's almost reminiscent of when Solar rolled his Broodlord army on top of nukes. It looked like processing drones popped out at exactly the wrong moment. The Leviathan cloak was revealed and Barcode moved into Pounce and boom. To his credit, he is rebuilding and he's going back to the turrets. That's an excellent idea. That's what got him the lead in this game against Quora's heir to begin with. But he is also remaking his Badgers. I'm sure he's thinking, Nobody falls for the old porcelain god maneuver twice. Oh, those Leviathans are looking so pleased with themselves. Quar is completely maxed out, so he's gonna double expand. His bank's over 12,000. I feel like he's got enough minerals saved up to remax at least twice. But not with gas, though. Both players really struggling to get gas right now. I guess that happens when you start focusing on those capital ships. Oh, here we go again. Barcode's like, I dare ya. Drop the puke nuke again, I dare ya. And he's got detection this time. Quarter puts down the puke nukes and tries to draw the badgers into it again. But the badgers have already adapted, they steer clear. The processing drones cast analyze weakness, that's that red dot. Uh, this is probably a good time to mention that uh, volatile discharge counts as friendly fire. Quarter has gotta dodge it too. Oh, this might be the fight those badgers want. The cloak adds nothing. 
And the torrents add everything. Yes, kids, illegal file sharing is that deadly. Quora uses a volatile discharge to plan his escape. It's the old puke and go. But barcode is remaxed now, and he's bringing one scary army to bear. Quora doesn't see the cloak processing drones, so his casualist energy is all getting wasted on covering spray. All oh, the badgers can shoot while they retreat, and the moles gun down the volatile discharge. You don't have to retreat from it, you can also kill it. It's a bit analogous to killing the ghost that's trying to land the nuke. You just don't really need detection to do it. Quora remaxes with Zidlings and Raptors. I think he's trying to be gas efficient. That or he just doesn't want more than nine Krakens. Because as we all know, if you violate the nine maximum Kraken policy, the StarCraft Commission sends you a registered letter. And nobody wants a letter from the commission. The units all look like they're exhausted. Dudes, we've been going at this for 25 minutes now. Okay, here comes the remax of units with the Zidlings. And there's the Raptors. We'll see how the low-tech switch works. One thing it's done already is it's really helped Quora get his gas bank up. I can't remember if I mentioned it before, but all those Genitron turrets can actually be buried. They get cloak, but they don't attack if they're underground, which is why you see most players just leaving them up all the time. It's a blow-by for the Zidlings. They get to the mineral line. You can see how that one turret goes into lockdown and stops firing. Worker kills are happening. I think this is part of a ploy to draw the Genitron defenses north. Remember, the Krakens are all still down there. Yeah, they're gonna go for the base at the bottom. And if Barcode is overreacted to the Zidlings, he's gonna be in trouble. He split his army, so he does have some defenses. But the Raptors just drop that processing core. Meanwhile, the Badgers are gonna clean up those Zidlings. But the real battle's to the southwest. Barcode has marshaled his forces correctly to the threat now. Between the Torrents and the Badgers, he can really rip some holes in that Zayed. He's just gotta watch out for acid nests underneath him. That is so cool, it causes a pause in the middle of the fight. And then if the Zayed has Menlings in their force, they're probably gonna be healing and taking advantage of that pause a lot more than the Genitron. I should mention that at this point, the Raptors have the Cleaving Spores upgrade. So every one of those flying Zerglings is doing plus three damage and that's really gonna add up because there's just so many of them. And then they get a further plus five against armor, which a lot of Genitron units are. Looks like our Genitron player is gonna max out with Badgers, but he's filling out the final space with Aquila. The Aquila looks like an armored troop, kind of like a Boba Fett. And it's a really interesting unit. The closest analogy might be the Terran Ghost. It has terrific range, terrific damage, but its attack requires energy. It has no base standard attack. So it's like, what if a ghost could only snipe? Well, he'd be amazing until he ran out of juice. So they really need this upgrade called Phalanx Reactor. It gives them a 50% increase to their energy regeneration. Speaking of energy, see how those processing drones are getting energy from the processing core? They just kind of do flybys and charge up. That's such a cool variation to the game. This late in the game when the Genitron has six processing cores out there, the processing drone should almost have like limitless energy if they just keep circling around. I love it. Totally makes me want to play the Genitron again. Oh, since Quora's maxed out, he's making additional structures to increase his production capacity. He's making five biomass hatcheries all at once in the bottom left. With that location, he's going to be able to pop out a ton of units and have them to the front in no time. He's going to need them though, because how do you deal with a badger force like that? And they are backed by moles and torrents. And just a couple of those Aquilas I was talking about. Oh, the Genitron's going after the Krakens. Oh, they've got so much damage to bear when they get that first shot off. I don't think Quora's army can take that level of punishment. He knows it. He's putting down the volatile discharge. And remembering that awesome moment when he lost his whole army. Barcode has got to get everybody out of there. He forgot his poor processing drone and it goes up in a conflagration of lava. But then the Genitron go right back at the Zayed. Oh, a great adaptation by Barcode. He's figured out how to deal with this strategy. Pull back to avoid the discharge, but then come right back. And this time he mows down Quora's army. He's earned himself a 50 point supply lead. Can he capitalize? He goes right at the closest Zayed scavenger nest. There was a bile pit for defense, but it just vanished. And he can focus down the one on the other side with a gazillion shots. Oh, the devastation of these badgers. He's not even burying his moles. He's keeping them mobile. Five bile pits, that should be unstoppable, but the badgers are just gonna knife right through that. 
Horror's got tons of money though. He's gonna try remaking Exterminators. But first he's got some Zidlings who are gonna try their hand at this. But I don't think there's nearly enough. They're just gonna get chewed up. Maybe they can focus down one Badger. Oh, Quarter's got Revilers available to defend. It's a pity they're not gonna live long enough for us to talk about them. That's a great offensive unit, but it's way too squishy to deal with a squad of Badgers. Oh, but they're just a distraction. The Exterminators slip in and drop a bunch of incendiary infusions on the Badgers. The splits are late and the Badgers take a lot of damage. They got softened up quite a bit there. Notice that the Exterminators ran off. They don't want to fight that many Badgers directly either. So in the meantime, Barcode is doing so much damage. Horror is not out of this yet though. He's still got that bank. He's filling up his supply with more Zidlings and more Exterminators. That incendiary infusion worked pretty well for him. Barcode pauses to admire his destruction. He's just ordered eight more Badgers. They're built and I think he's looking to link them up with his fleet. The Genitron's army supply is double that of the Zayid. The bugs are rich, but they're still in oh so much trouble trying to find a way to deal with that Badger fleet. Because after that tour of destruction, for the first time, the Genitron are out mining the Zayid. A few more expensive Aquilas are getting made for the Genitron as well. I think Kor is looking to hit with that incendiary infusion again. It worked well for him the first time. There's a huge cooldown on that thing though, 32 seconds. The cloaked processing drones are keeping tabs on the Zayid bases. If the Badgers go on another concert tour, Quora could be in trouble. Oh, but that is a lot of exterminators. Forget the cooldown. He could really rotate them. And they have a soft underbelly of Zidlings, it looks like. Quora is actually getting close to getting remaxed again. Barcode might regret having sat back here. He is macroing, though, diversifying himself from those Badgers. It's hard to see the Dark Moles on this map, but he's adding more back in. Okay, so you remember when I said the Badgers don't have any abilities like Yamato Cannon? It may have been more accurate to say they don't have any offensive abilities. Barcode's gone ahead and researched an expensive upgrade for the Badgers called the AMA Defense Turret. Because sometimes we all need a defense against those Ask Me Anything things on Reddit. They just go on way too long. Or perhaps the AMA stands for Against Medical Advice. It's a well-known fact that the Genitron hate people who don't listen to their doctors. Seriously though, the AMA Defense Turret is something like a point defense drone. It fires to block incoming missiles at a range of seven. Oh, hold the phone, here comes Quar. Incendiary infusions are launched in the air. They hit that point defense drone thingy I was talking about that doesn't affect spells. Oh, the Badger Pack is just crackling away. And in seconds, vertical seconds, the player's supply situation is flipped. Quar is ahead, significantly ahead. And Barcode's left wondering where his Badgers went. Those Exterminators are all on cooldown though. The Genitron could get the revenge yet, but it's Quar who's up on top of the macro here. He's adding six more Exterminators and 16 more Zidlings. Oh, is that more? The Badgers stray too far away from the Torrent protection and the Exterminators kill him. Barcode is pretty close to being Sans Badger here. Quar wants to use his Zidlings to go after the Torrents. But the moles are having something to say about that. Oh, so Quar is going to rush the moles. Oh, this is going to be close. Who's got enough left? It's Quar. It's Quar with the cleanup. The Genitron army is gone. He needs to macro immediately. Does Quar appreciate how far ahead he is right now? He has an opportunity to go after production. Quar going for mass reviler. Barcode is looking to rebuild his badgers, but he can only build them three at a time. And he has exhausted his gas bank. He needs mineral only units. And it's hard to see how Spitfires are gonna help him here. Those little spiky guys are the eroders. They might look like adorable hedgehogs, but I assure you they are not. When they start firing, they just start speeding up. It's like a crowd clapping at a sporting event. It just goes faster and faster. I think we're about to get a look at that here. He's gonna take a poke at the repulsor turrets. The Aquilas come up to help, but incendiary infusions are dropped on them. It works on ground units as well as air, and they die. Barcode's trying to remake his torrents. That'll be great against the exterminators, but not the revilers. After mass experimentation, Quora may have the composition he wants to end this. But I've thought that a few times now, and Barcode just keeps coming back like a boss. He's the T-1000. Oh, Quora's gonna move on the Badgers. He's got incendiary infusions off cooldown. He hits the Badgers. The Badgers need to split. They're taking the hits. 
The Torns show up to attack the Exterminators. The Exterminators can't take that level of barrage. Somehow, someway, Barcode has survived. Those torrents are still bursting from the effects of those incendiary infusions. Please, stop infusing me with your incendiariness. And there's the GG! Oh, but not before he throws in a little balance complaint there. You bet we're gonna talk about that. Stick around. First things first, anybody who knows me knows I am not gonna pass up on the chance to relive that volatile discharge hit. That one where the Genitron lost his entire army of badgers? We need to treat ourselves to that at one quarter speed and zoomed in on the good parts. So the Krakens are cloaked by the Kaznalisk's covering spray. And Kor is going to put down not one but two volatile discharges. They're right next to two repulsors that are immediately going to attack them. But they are not going to be able to focus them down in time. Meanwhile, the processing drones are going to conveniently show up, which is going to give the Genitron detection. And that, unfortunately, the Badgers misinterpret as the moment to pounce. And we're going to zoom in because that could not have gone worse. This is kind of like all your bodily fluid nightmares rolled into one. There's ten Badgers in that pack. Only two are going to survive. You know what? I'm not going to lie. I'm spoiled, so I have to admit the visuals weren't as great as some of the disruptor hits or Baneling landmines we've been showcasing on this channel. But now that we zoom out, you can see the Genitron supply has dropped all the way to 127. A mere eye blink resulted in eight obliterated badgers. The resource cost of that was 4,300. 4,300. That's worth typing World Trade Federation. Talk about a TSN turning point. Though can I really call it that, as remarkably the Genitron actually recovered from that and remaxed. And then, of course, ultimately went on to lose to an attack from a different Zayat ability. The Exterminator's Incendiary Infusion. Our barcoded player went on to express a few choice words about that. Some might call that balance whining, but hey, in my view, it's all legitimate personal opinion in the heat of the moment of a great game. Whether we admit it to ourselves or not, we all like to think about balance from time to time as a theory crafting exercise. So let's do it. Is the Genitron barcoded player right? Is the incendiary infusion unfair? I want to look at that from both sides if I can. I'll tell you, my immediate reaction is, he's dead wrong. Although it has different graphics, the incendiary infusion is essentially the same spell that we know and love as the Viper's parasitic bomb. The problem really seemed to be that our barcoded competitor didn't understand that. And so he didn't split his units properly, so he took way more damage from it than he was supposed to. In fact, Incendiary Infusion does less damage than the Parasitic Bomb. It does 10 damage per second, lasting 9 seconds, whereas Parasitic Bomb does 120 damage over 7 seconds. Viewed from that lens, this isn't overpowered, this is potentially underpowered. But there's more factors to consider. The Viper is a pure spellcaster, and it has to balance the energy cost, which is 125, not an inconsiderable number. The Exterminator, on the other hand, has its own base attack against air, and it's pretty solid. That means there's much less of a penalty if you overmake Exterminators. They'll always have value as long as your opponent has air units. Now, make too many Vipers in a game, and you'll die. Unless you're Rainer, he gets to make as many Vipers as he wants for some reason. And on top of that, Incendiary Infusion has no energy cost. It's just on a cooldown. It's a big one, mind you. 32 seconds. That's the entire rush distance of an average map. Many units can spawn in far less time than that. For reference, a medevac is 30 seconds. Even still, as Quora demonstrates, if you get enough of them, you can rotate the infusions. So, is it overpowered? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm open to persuasion here. I think its biggest component is that most players just don't know how to defend against it. And that's not really a balance issue. But I don't think I could take myself seriously if I didn't somewhat agree that in Quora's hands, it's crazy good. So, this was a fun game. Let me just quickly remind people that if you're looking for more of my games, you can recognize them by that versus symbol in the thumbnails. I love that some of you have been checking them out a lot lately. I appreciate it. So from my base to yours, Zugs Wang out. To continue your StarCraft journey, 
Nova advises you to click the video in the upper rectangle. But Kerrigan warns you to watch your six and click the video in the bottom rectangle. Or you can stimpack your StarCraft experience. Subscribe to Zugzwang StarCraft. Just hit the circle. From my base to yours, Zugzwang out.